What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel and podcast, we cover everything related to stocks and investing. Within the last couple of months, at the time of recording this video, two more giants in the crypto brokerage industry have gone bankrupt, Celsius and Voyager Digital. Altogether, these crypto trading platforms held billions of dollars worth of customer cryptocurrencies, which represented some customers' life savings. Now, by filing for bankruptcy protection, they're not necessarily trying to protect themselves from big-time creditors like venture capitalists or Wall Street banks. Instead, they're trying to protect themselves from having to pay back their own customers' money. In its bankruptcy filings, Celsius said that it owes its customers upwards of $4.7 billion. One customer in Ireland wrote a letter to the bankruptcy judge, saying that after the freezing of withdrawals, he had lost the family farm and his family is now homeless. Meanwhile, the company has also said that it has over $150 million in ample liquidity to maintain operations while it goes through the bankruptcy and restructuring process. This crypto Armageddon has largely been caused by a combination of two key factors. One, aggressive marketing campaigns of crypto brokerages and exchanges. And two, risky deployment of customer deposits and funds into risky bets leveraged to the crypto markets. And it hasn't been isolated to just a few brokerages. Recently, the FDIC targeted FTX US, one of the most recognized crypto exchanges in the US, with a cease and desist order. The FDIC said that FTX US was deceptively marketing their services about their accounts being FDIC insured, when in reality, FTX is not FDIC insured. That gives a false impression to potential customers who think that their crypto deposits are safe with them. If people think their deposits are insured, they may be more likely to deposit more money onto certain platforms. In this video and podcast, we'll go over what was in the cease and desist orders, why FTX US was in violation, and how their shockingly aggressive marketing has targeted ordinary investors like you and me. But before we dive in, make sure you've signed up for our daily newsletter at wallstreetmillennial.com newsletter. It's delivered straight to your email inbox at 5am every morning of the trading week, and has everything you need to know before taking on the day. The top 2-5 to five stories in the markets each day, expertly analyzed and distilled into a short 3 minute read so you know the things that matter most for your money. We also publish a featured stock on the newsletter once a week, where we highlight one stock that deserves your attention. In just a few minutes a day, you can prepare yourself with all the market due diligence that we perform for you. And the best part is, it's completely free. Go to wallstreetmillennial.com newsletter or click the link in the description below to put your email on the mailing list and start receiving the newsletter today. To understand the controversy around FTX, we first have to understand the background of the company and its billionaire founder, Sam Bankman-Fried. Bankman-Fried is someone you'd describe as being born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Both of his parents were professors at Stanford University. In 2010, he attended MIT, where he blogged about baseball and politics while studying physics. When he graduated, he used his physics degree to get a job as a quant trader at Jane Street, one of the most successful proprietary trading firms on Wall Street. There, he gained experience and expertise using quantitative trading strategies in the international ETFs market. But after just three years, he decided that working for a boss was not for him. He founded his own quantitative trading company, which he named Alameda Research, and started taking advantage of arbitrages in the Bitcoin markets. In 2019, he founded FTX, a centralized crypto exchange. FTX and its American branch, FTX US, allow traders to bet on all sorts of cryptocurrency markets. It charges commissions on each trade and also allows customers to take out up to 10 times leverage on crypto holdings. Users can lend and borrow money and tokens from each other. For example, if you have some crypto sitting in your account that you want to earn a yield on, you can put it up for lending and FTX will match you with someone else who wants to borrow crypto. But FTX takes its own cut. 20% of the interest on margin loans goes directly to FTX's profits. So we know what FTX is and how it operates. Now we're ready to understand why the FDIC sent them a cease and desist order. Like any brokerage that operates on commissions, FTX is dependent on people trading on the platform. The more trading volume occurs on FTX and FTX US, the more commissions they can charge, and the more leverage their customers use, the more fees they can charge on the interest. So it's clearly in the business's best interest to get as many ordinary people, like you and me, interested in crypto and get them trading as much crypto as possible on the exchange. And you'd be hard pressed to find any other crypto brokerage, stock brokerage, or any other kind of brokerage that's been as aggressive in doing so as FTX. What's the best way to target young, impressionable people with advertising? Celebrity endorsements. FTX took it to the next level. On the website of FTX US, they prominently display many of the biggest names in sports with the text, join some of the world's biggest names who trust FTX. 
They've signed some of the greatest players in America's most popular sports as ambassadors, including football legend Tom Brady, four-time NBA champion, 2022 NBA Finals MVP, and the greatest three-point shooter of all time, Steph Curry, tennis champion Naomi Osaka, NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal, Major League Baseball champion David Ortiz, and more. They've even signed Giselle Bundchen, a supermodel, to be an ambassador, and are a sponsor for the Mercedes-AMG Patronus Formula One team. But it doesn't even stop there with sponsorships. FTX has also spent millions on naming rights for sports venues and other kinds of exposure in Major League Sports. All umpires in the MLB will now wear an FTX patch in all regular season and playoff games. FTX is now the official crypto platform of the Golden State Warriors, and will thus be featured prominently inside the Warriors Stadium. And they bought the naming rights to the Miami Heat Stadium, which is now called FTX Arena. Given the star-studded roster of this ambassador class, someone unfamiliar with FTX US might think that FTX is some company related to sports, perhaps a sports drink or nutritional supplement, or maybe even a sports betting platform. But crypto trading is entirely unrelated to sports, and while their ambassadors like Tom Brady and Naomi Osaka are probably extremely intelligent individuals, they're not exactly known as crypto experts. What they are known as is being icons to ordinary people that have the power to influence consumers. Get someone like Steph Curry to endorse a product or platform and millions of loyal fans will follow. Showing that you have a superior product doesn't really matter. All that matters is the ability to convert the consumer. But it seems that FTX US may have taken it a step too far and now the feds are going after them. The FDIC, or Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, has sent a cease and desist letter to FTX US, along with four other crypto companies, for false and misleading statements about FDIC deposit insurance. The FDIC is a US government corporation that was established during the depths of the Great Depression to restore confidence in the US banking system and prevent the panic that causes runs on the bank. A bank run occurs when members of the public lose faith that their bank has enough cash in its vaults to make good on their deposits, and they all rush to withdraw their money at the same time. If too many people try to withdraw their bank deposits at the same time, the bank won't have enough cash on hand, because some of those deposits were lent out in the form of mortgages, small business loans, etc. The FDIC insures deposits up to $250,000 so that people don't have to worry about whether or not they'll be able to withdraw their deposits. The insurance applies whenever something happens to an insured bank, even if the bank goes bankrupt. FDIC insurance is extremely effective at instilling confidence in the deposit-taking establishments that are FDIC insured. Bank runs are now almost non-existent in the country because ordinary people are so confident in the guarantees that the US government makes for depositors in the event of a bank going insolvent. On July 20th, the president of FTX US published a tweet saying, quote, Direct deposits from employers to FTX US are stored in individually FDIC insured bank accounts in the users' names, unquote. He also tweeted, stocks are held in FDIC insured and SIPC insured brokerage accounts. Those seem to imply that FTX is in some way FDIC insured, and thus that there is some second layer of protection for crypto traders on FTX US in the case of bankruptcy events. But stock brokerages and certainly crypto exchanges are not FDIC insured. The FDIC does not insure any brokerage accounts, stocks, or crypto. Additionally, the claim that direct deposits into FTX are held in individually FDIC-insured bank accounts does not identify the specific banks that customers' deposits go to. That constitutes a material omission of information, a big violation. After receiving the cease and desist letter, the FDX US president deleted his original tweets and said, quote, We really didn't mean to mislead anyone, and we didn't suggest that FTX US itself, or that crypto slash non-fiat assets benefit from FDIC insurance. I hope this provides clarity on our intentions. Happy to work directly with the FDIC on these important topics." Unquote. The fact that FTX made those statements doesn't necessarily mean that they are deliberately trying to make people believe that FTX is FDIC insured when it really isn't. It seems like FTX is too big and successful of a company, and has too much on the line to risk purposely deceiving the public. But it does suggest that crypto firms like FTX are taking things a little too far, and in some cases straying into a gray area of morality. Even if they didn't consciously try to deceive people by mentioning the FDIC insurance, they definitely knew that mentioning the words FDIC insured would help convince people to deposit funds onto the platform. And we know from their over-the-top sports marketing that FTX puts incredible value on influencing its customers and potential customers. Crypto is a brand new industry that is still in the early stages of regulation. Over the coming years, crypto firms will need to learn that you can't just do whatever you want in the industry without some level of business ethics.
Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about FTX US's cease and desist order? Do you think they were wrong to put out those tweets? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to sign up for our daily business and finance email newsletter at wallstreetmillennial.com newsletter. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.